Ndito batangiru mno kuhuliriza ilaka liyabunyo rokuru kakuno mda yaspora Hano mtgm radio Ndito batangiru mno kuhuliriza ilaka liyabunyo rokuru kakuno mda yaspora Hano mtgm radio Hello, hello, hello. This is Eira Kariavunyoro Om Diaspora. This is uh, Caroline Ajuna Atenyi, your host or presenter as always. Mwebali muno kutuninga in Eira Kariavunyoro Om Diaspora. Nitubatangira muno inyuena abagenyivai tunaba nyoro na abanyoro kati. Uh, uh, Nkobutu likiro eh, dakali abunyo rom diaspora nirigenda kuwa mu two languages that is English and Runyoro the language that is spoken by the people from Bunyoro in the west uh, Bunyoro Kitara found in the western part of Uganda uh, today to be very much privileged kuwa and to hostinga once again um, talindua warukurato rabunyoro Kitara kit kingdom omukuru owekitinisa Isaac Kalembe Akiki uh, he, this is his third time to be on this show. We are very indeed uh, privileged once again to host him. Uh, na agenda continuing and uh, baza her series is uh, Omukama Wai to the, the hero of Bunyoro or the, the, the hero of Bu Uganda at large. Omukama Chua to Kabalega. Uh, niwe tugenda kuwa ntubaza hao today. Uh, Nkabulikiro ni nyenda kuwa welcoming umutalindwa warukurato ruwabunyoro. Abe hobu gambo buke obuwa kubaza hao nai uh, kubara mkia hao kwa bakira nyue na mumu manjire. Uh, abata manjire niwe umutalindwa um, um, meaning the speaker of the, uh, of, the, uh, of the parliament of Bunyoro Kitara Kingdom. Uh, akiki tusemerule muno kubaha mnaitwe hanu kilokinu 
ahaira uh, kali abunyo rom diaspora we bale munok to ektinisa no kuikaraga no tutera akaire ha haruba juno ikiriza kuja kuba mu obugambo buke bwo kutwegesa hali omukama wa bunyoro the hero of bunyoro the omukama chwatu wa kabalega a uh, no bugambo bo buke tinkwenda kumaro bwire ni kusaba akiki obe obugambo bo kubaza hali aba viewers by to so that we can connect and then we start off the show otyo muno akiki enyi mwe we bade muno uh, kumpa kabisa kanu once again kuva ni mbaza runi ni nzoka ha um amukutuguno um kuba maze kuba gambira ni yonga rindwa aiza kalembe biro maisa akiki uh tukia rero kinu uh, program ndi yenya ukana habo kuba ni mbaliza omurubuga rwaitu uh orwa oil hoima oil city kindi kampala ndi hoima amun um, hoima oil city oh, wow. the seat of bunyoro kitara kingdom and our great rukurato wow amazing we bale muno Ah, umuru ndo gua sembere ya our first series, unkaba mm. zohum kama kabadega. But basically, unkaba ni mbaza, unkaba unkaba ni mbaza ha timelines, facts and figures. Ah, unoto akangi. Mm. Kya lero kinu unkwenda tu gendo maiso kurora kabadega montuki. Who is kabadega? Mm. Uh, uh, we look at his background. We look at his uh, birth, uh, early childhood, and the like. But as a way of introduction, I'd like to inform the, our audience mm. that Kabalega is regarded as the greatest king Bunyoro Kitara has ever had. If yeah. that's a, not an understatement, it could be um, uh, Uganda or the Great the Great Lakes region. I don't want to say that it could be Africa, because if at the African level he competes with Shaka Zulu of South Africa and some more to of West Africa. Those of you have studied history. But in this part of the of the, of the continent, Kabalega is the greatest king to have ever lived. And to trust the Banyoro, he is the, the hero of all times. Yes. No king has ever superseded him. In the history of Banyoro Kitara Kingdom, we've had about two or three kingdoms who who almost came to Kabalega's uh to Kabalega's uh, uh, status. The first one could be Ndahura who started in Devachwezi, and uh, maybe before him there was uh, um, uh, uh, Isaza Rugambana. But those are the two kings who expanded the world to its zenith. But Kavalega, when he came to power, despite all the, the challenges that he, that, had, that he made, despite all the road that had gone on hmm. for almost 40 or 50 years before he ascended the throne, hmm. he managed to turn around the kingdom. So that's why he's regarded as the greatest king uh, and uh, the, the hero of all times. He was the 23rd Movito king. In the Movito dynasty, he was number 23. Wow. Mm -hmm. His father, Kamrasu, was 20, the 22nd, or he was the 23rd Movito king. Wow. Um, uh, he came to the throne, uh, he came to the throne at the age of 16. Yes. 16 is, is, is seemed to be a magical number because that's the time that had, it was at, at that age that her mother, Kanyanginya Mtahingurwa, got married or was brought to Mkama Kevambe um, uh, the fourth. Amazing. Mm. Kamras Kevambe the fourth. Mm. So 16 uh, rhymes with Kavalega as the king and also rhymes with the mother, his mother, Kevambe. Uh, um, Amazing. So, uh, basically, He's Kamrasi, I mean, Kabalega was mm. born mm. early childhood. Yeah. Kabalega was born on the 18th of June, yes. 1853. He ascended the throne in 1870. That means he was 16 years old when he ascended the throne. He was still an adolescent. Yeah. He was one of the 38, uh, 38 children of uh, Omukama Kievambe the fourth Kamrasi. As I, I has explained, Kievambe means usurper, someone who grabs the throne, yes. who is not supposed to be king, is called Kievambe. That's the title which is given to a, someone who becomes king by use of force, by grabbing the throne from another rightful heir. Right. So 
Kabalega was one of the 38 children of Omkama Kamrasi. The other, among the Kamrasi's children, uh, the prominent one could be the firstborn, um, who was Kabigumire Ruhino. Kabigumire was the most popular of all uh, Kamrasi's children because his mother was the first partner or whom we may call the official wife. Mm. And the, uh, maybe we could also talk about Kabagungu, who also tried to claim the throne as we shall see, and the, um, among others. Yes. Uh, Kabalega's, Kabalega's name, uh, its background was uh, is, is affiliated to his mother's background. His mother, Kiev, uh, Kanyange Nyamutahingurwa, Avoli, Omuyonzakati, was a Muhumakati. She was the daughter of one of the chiefs of Vurega. For your information, Vurega was one of the areas of, great, of the great Bunyoro Kitara Kingdom. Mm. Uh, don't be mistaken by the decision that were taken by the Europeans at the Berlin Conference. Yeah. whereby they divided Africa according to their own, uh, their own volition. Mm. And in so doing, a large part of Unyoro Kitara Kingdom, especially Vurega, was ceded to DR Congo, uh, which was Zaire at the time, or Congo, Belgian Congo at the time. Mm. But before that, it was part of Unyoro Kitara Kingdom, and the boundaries of Unyoro Kitara Kingdom was Ituri Forest, deep in central uh, cool. Zaire, or Congo. Mm. So uh, the fact that his mother came from Urega and when she gave birth to a boy, uh, the Banyoro exclaimed and said, Akana Kavarega. That in Urega means a child of the people of Urega or a child of Urega. Because that was a long name, it was more descriptive than a formal. So it was shortened to Kavarega and that became his name Kavalega from Akana Kavalega because her mother was came Kavalega. from Brega mm. yeah in eastern DR Congo which was by then as I have said part of Unyoro Kingdom. Amazing yeah that is the history of where we so uh, as a child mm. as a child Kavalega uh, grew up in the the cool environment, the conducive environment of Toro. Mm. Toro, by then, was one of the counties of Unyoro Kingdom. And Kamrasi had uh, appointed Nyamutahingurwa's brother as the chief of Toro. So he had made his brother-in-law as chief of Toro. So when Kavalega was born, he, he, he entrusted Kavalega to his maternal uncle to go and keep him in the violence of Toro. As, as, I, as I mentioned last time, that Toro is one of the most conducive uh, places in Uganda. It is referred to as the Switzerland of Uganda because of Mount, Mount Ruenzori and the cold climate there. That's where Kavalega grew. And the, uh, among his hobbies as a child was hunting. He enjoyed hunting and he hunted as far deep as the slopes of Mount uh, Ruenzori around the Nyakasura area. Yeah. So uh, allow me at this time also talk about his education and, and training. You may think that uh, Kavalega, because there was no formal education, that Kavalega was not educated. On the contrary, Kavalega was highly educated uh, and trained. We may say that he was a graduate. A graduate indeed he was because he was a product of Galihuma University. Galihuma was the only university in the Nyoro Kitara Kingdom. Just to, Mutali, come Mutali, as a, just to interact with you there, uh, Galihuma, is there any physical physical building or any site that we can see us as Banyoro and be proud about or the people from the K Kitara Kingdom and know that this is the first university that has ever happened in, Af in Uganda? Is there any, any site somewhere about uh, about this university you're talking about, where uh, Kabalega went? Garihuma University was located on Wutiti here. Wuti, okay. Currently, there is Wutiti Primary Teachers College, Wutiti PTC, 
and in the neighborhood there is Garihuma Primary School, which among its alumni includes Captain Tom Butimi, wow. our minister. Amazing. So uh, if you if you are looking for physical evidence, mm. you can go and have a look at uh, Butiti Primary Teachers College. But that's where Galhuma University stood during the the, uh, the the time we are talking about. It was the, it was the um, Bunyoro's premier informal education education institution. It was located at Mukunyu Hill in Mwenge County. Mwenge County uh, is currently uh, currently lies in Kenjoje District in the Toro Kingdom. It's no longer part of Bunyoro Kara Kingdom. Okay, amazing. Uh, it was the center of excellence mm. and offered it. Um, a lot of uh, training. Its curriculum included education and health, yes. administration, uh, etiquette, that's acceptable behavior, culture, health, mm. human medicine, history, ideology, patriotism, diplomacy, and administration, among others. Yes. As we shall see in the reforms that Kaurega introduced, Ogalhuma University trained uh, surgeons. Amazing. Uh, in fact, uh, uh, Dr. Reverend, Reverend Dr. Felkins in 1879 witnessed Banyoro surgeons operating a lady who was giving birth. And the, that, that went down into rec recorded history. And in 1879, the Zerian section had not even been started being practiced in the United States of in the United Kingdom. So you can see the level of training that Galihuma University had impact, imparted on A its actually, citizens, uh, on the uh, of the Kingdom. Akiki, Aroha nu omuntu waita kutugamba one of our viewers, Philippu Nyaruboy Kiumuro says, Galihuma is found in present day Kinjojo yes. at, a, uh, at a place called yes. Kingara, I don't know. Professor Edward Rugumayo yeah. studied there. That is great. Mm. So one of our yes. great professors, mm. uh, Edward Rugumayo, studied in Galihuma, the current mm. that time, which was called Galihuma. So eh, okay, uh Mwebale Muno a film to you kutugambi a professor go and uh Akiki, we continue with the education of Kavalega at Galihuma University. Yes, and the uh, specific on language, yes. uh, the university took care because it had the best tutors, uh, uh, the experts in our language, mm. who stayed in who, who stayed around that place, Mwenge. The official language, the palace language, was called Ruhenda. Ruhenda. So okay. mm. the uh, the Rio Runyoro or Nyakitara language was called Ruhenda. It was spoken in the palace. Yes. All the other people like us in other other areas spoke as a, a diluted Vinyoro. But if you wanted to know the queen's language or the king's language, you had to go to Galihuma, you had to go to Mwenge and study there. And th those were the privilege that Kavalega and other princesses or children of royals and children of, sea of chiefs enjoyed. In fact, the kings their, their brothers, their relatives, the chiefs sent their children to study in Galihuma University. Specifically for the for the uh, for the yeah. yes, specifically mm. for the princes, mm. they were sent there to be uh, to be uh, enlightened in the diplomacy, patriotism, administration, history, ideology, among others. Amazing. And the but but. Uh, there were other uh, prominent people. Now, um, Kiumra had mentioned Edward Rugumayo, but the prominent people during uh, the reign of Kavalega and before him who attended Galhuma University included Deva Moroga. Deva Moroga was the prime minister and head of the sacred guild. That was, it was a must. If you are the prime minister, you had to go there. The Nyakoha, the, the Nyako, the uh, who was a physician, the king's doctor, had also to go and attend training in Galihuma University. Kasoida was also uh, associate or fortune tailor. Mm. Um, among the, the ladies, prominent ladies who attended Galihuma University in the New York Terra history was Kogere uh, and Nyakahuma. Kogere was the traditional chief 
houve o, uh, houve o, o Western Uganda, um, specifically in Webisengo, and the uh, Nyakahuma was the queen, or the, the, the person who was entrusted with the, the shrine of uh, Movende. Yes. As you as you might be aware, this shrine of Movende uh, was was started by the Bachwezi, and when Ndahura um, uh, left to settle in Nyakasura, he le he entrusted this shrine to one of his wives called Nyakahuma. So it mm -hmm. was hereditary that any person from the that clan of that lady took over that uh, important yeah. office. So they also had to go for training in this important university. It is also important to note that. After training, the princess would be brought back to Hoima or Movende in the palace for further scrutiny, specifically to receive further training uh, or, and secondly, to, 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 to make it possible for the king or his brothers or other officials to identify a potential heir. However, the princesses were not needed in the palace. They were left in Mwenge and settled in Toro. That's why you find that there are very many beautiful ladies in that part of uh, Bunyoro Chira Kingdom or that part of that Toro Kingdom because those were princesses, those were the daughters of, of, Banyoro, of Banyoro kings who decided that their daughters should stay in, the, in those environments because they were not needed in the palace. palace. Okay. So that's that's where I, that's what I can I can say about Kawalega's training, and the, maybe um, just to to mention that after, when the princes were brought back to the palace, two were identified. These were Kabigumire, the firstborn, and Kawalega, and Kamurasi entrusted them to his brother, Prince Kamuhanda or Mudaya, to find them to teach them more about. Uh, the history of New York Chara Kingdom, uh, to refine them in etiquette and to refine them in, ad and in administration and to identify who of the two should be the, should succeed Kamrasi in the event of the latter's death. Amazing. So uh, that, that's basically what I can talk about. And maybe also, maybe it's also important to know that Kavaleg and other princesses were given uh, rigorous military training. Because to become a successful king, you had to be a soldier as well. So all those princesses, especially the two, were given rigorous military training. Amazing. Um, that's basically what I can say about Kawalega's education and training. And now allow me to talk about his character and personality. Uh, we will talk about if, the personality. If, if I'm given a uh, so uh, uh, sh uh, shortly, uh, maybe I will just uh, give you five few minutes to talk about the personality of, uh, because we are going to be going off uh, for a break in, in, in just a second. So, Otiomuno Omtalindwa to Gambido physical character personality, Yomkama Chua. In, in brief, Kavalega was courageous, he was single minded. Single-minded means if he, decided, if he has decided to do something, whatever persuasion, he would not listen to it. He would just go, it was headlong, he would continue with the decision that he has taken. Hmm. He, he was sympathetic to the common people. And the, uh, 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 his uncle, Kamuhanda Omudaya, whom he was entrusted for further training, uh, didn't like Kabalega. To him, Kawalega was short-tempered, he was headstrong, he was proud, and self-opinionated. So he, he advised Kamurasi not to make him heir. Wow. On the contrary, however, in the so-called negative, I'm putting what negative in inverted commas, negative uh, qualities are the ones that attracted, that made Kamurasi uh, like Kawalega as his successor. Yes. And uh, um, these qualities, these traits, can be depicted from his nicknames. Some of Kabalega's nicknames are Ekituleki Nobere Avoemi, meaning one who was intolerant of rebels. I know. And yeah. indeed, when he became king, he punished any rebellious uh, royal. For example, 
He sent his prince, prince Komuishwa to life imprisonment. Wow. Just his brother. Mm. He's imprisoning, he imprisoned him to life imprisonment. He sent Prince Rujumba to Mwenge to look after his cattle. To go and look after my cattle. That's Kabalega. He's sending his, 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 his brother. Yeah. You can see that the severity of that, of, that, of that sentence. He also put to death one of his sisters wow. who was supporting uh, uh, rival claimants. He killed his sister. So that was Kabalega. Mm. Uh, this was after he had defeated the Chope uh, best princess. Uh, Kabalega's other nicknames include uh, Ruhigwa, Rukorigwa, Nakaribamugobe, and Rwotamahanga. Just to mention a, a few. All these testify to his indomitable never say die character. Conqueror or die. Um, Conquer or die. Yeah. Can I go on? Just, um, just, uh, uh, okay. if, uh, just a few seconds and then I recognize the viewers and our listeners and then we go off the break. Just five seconds if you can do that. It will be okay. great. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So uh, contrary to other Europeans, the European looked at him in negative ways. Right from Sir Samuel Becker, he wrote badly about him. If you read uh, uh, Sir Samuel's book, The Ismailia, there isn't nothing positive about about Kavalega. However, Emini Pasha, as we shall see, Emini Pasha was the third governor of Equatorial province. He decided to come to Bunyora and meet Kavalega at Imparo in 1878. He stayed with Kavalega for, for 33 days. So for him, he looked at Kavalega and depicted him in good light. And he was very objective. Allow me to read what he wrote about, about Kavalega. Yes. I have often visited Kabalega subsequently and cannot say that I ever heard him speak an improper word or make an indecent gesture or that he was ever rude. Kabalega is cheerful, laughs readily and much, talks a great deal and does not appear to care to be bound by ceremony. I certainly cannot charge Kabalega with begging. On the contrary, he sent me daily in the most hospitable manner stores of corn Mir, Mwenge, among others, which although were, were intended to supply the wants of one day, could easily have been made to last for a fortnight. During my repeated visits, Kabalega gave me the impression of being a thoroughly hospitable and intelligent man. He proved this in a, to in a not worth manner in connection with an incident, which might have brought me into a very awkward position. Notwithstanding my strict orders, that no hostile action should be taken by the Egyptian during my visit to Bunyoro. The soldiers in our nearest station, led by stupid, jealous officers, made a raid and killed several Kabalega's people. Kabalega sent Katama, Katama was one of his chiefs, to give me this information and to assure me at the same time that although this occurrence was highly displeasing to him, it should in no way affect our personal relationship. I received a detailed account of all the events that happened during Becker's visit, a curiously different account from that given in Ismailia. So, in short, although Kabrega might have had his failings or his weaknesses, he was a very likable person, and this is depicted by none other than Emi Nipasha, a, a, a governor of Equatorial province who had come to conquer this part of the region and said with Kabrega, and he wrote very well about him. Well, in contrast with his contemporary Wale mno mtali indua uh, wa ulkurato rabunyo rokubamu eviga ambebe vyo tugambira about Kabalega. I just want to appreciate our viewers before we go off for the break. Kezia Kiza, thank you for tuning in. Uh, Mot Deize, hello Kezia, kuramukia Kezia, Mot Deize, thank you for tuning in. Uh, Bob Kialigonza, live from Dubai, thanks for the show. You're most welcome, Bob. Wale kusima, uh, Samuel Kitone Arali, uh, kusima, Tugume, Benny So. Okay, clear at Aston Cl Cl Clinton Road. We wale muno akiki kutuninga ini musime Titus. Thank you for tuning in. Robert, all the way from Italy. Thanks for the history of our kingdom. Omkuro akiki. Robert akusima. Omtali indwa. We wale kutuiki aho history ya kabalega. Mugisa Samuel. We wale program. Omtali indwa. Musimire. Kwe kutuwege sa umtali indwa ba kusima kunwe bale muno kwegesa. Philip nko wa redde nko wa tugambire. 
uh, Kutuijukiza, born on the 18th of June 1853. Thank you so much, We Phil, and thank you for telling us about Professor Rugumayo. Uh, Lydia Kiza, hello Ateni Karo and our guest Vakura Mukia Kuno Mtali Indwa, Webale Muno Sister Kutuninga in Alan J. Abitegeka History th Interesting. Webale Muno Alani as always to follow uh, Kutu Kutu. Kuba night to ham today, Jole Masebo Rukambuzi. Thank you so much. Amoti, Abantu Bakukaguzo Garuka di Kubazabi Okuria. Bakuka Guzakunu, you better come back next week. Philip uh, Kasaija uh, Kugonza Ra Kasaija Bolekeze uh, website Yabunyo Rokitara uh, Kubagambi about Galihuma University. Uh, uh, Nora Brenda, Nama Brenda, thank you for tuning in. Uh, Diana Kemirembe from US, as always, thank you for the support. Uh, Sam Karuhanga, Dieri, Webale Muno Mtalindwa, Aba Kusima, Adieri Karuhanga, Webale Muno, Adieri Kusima, uh, Kwesiga, uh, Kwesiga Gerard Wills, thank you so much, so excited to hear Runyoro, Webale Muno Kusima, Baiti Tuetegeleze Mpako Yawe, Kwesiga. Uh, Atuoki Habati Magezi all the way from the US. Thank you so much Atuoki for tuning in. Patrick Amoti, Nabandi Muno Baloho Bakuija, Judith Bigi Ranawe Nguna Izire Mwebale Nyue na kutuninga ini Abanyoro na Abanyoro Kata and Friends of Banyoro Tukubasawa, Tugendewa Hakuhumura, Nituija Kuba, Nitugaruka after the break. Omtali Indwa na continuinga with the physical appearance of Omkama om, om, Waitu, Omgonzewa Muno Chua to Kabalega. Mutio Muno, Abanyoro na Abanyoro Kati, see you after the break. Kangai Village is a little known place in Uganda, but in a real sense, history was made here during the colonization period of Uganda by the British. This was a battleground between the kings and colonialists in 1899. But how did they end up here? They were at war. So when they came across Lake Kwania, they first settled in uh, Adengino at the lake shore. We have a site there also called Kabarega Landing Site. In this bushy area stands the historical monument where Kabakamwanga was arrested. And the distance of 100 meters from here stands another monument where Kabalega was arrested. They were wounded. One of them was wounded. <coughs> A year when the whites were trying to treat, treat him. This one who was wounded, was not wounded, was very cruel. And he kicked the one, one white man. These monuments were erected in the early 1970s by the late Idi Amin Dada, who was the president of Uganda. He was very much concerned with these two sites. And he made these trips over. He would come within one month, he would come twice. The president himself, president, I mean. So, teacher, he came some fun here. At least he wanted something to be built here for the memory. But plaques that detailed the historical site were stripped off the monuments. And because of this neglect, the malls have turned them into their homes. The local leaders revealed to us that in this bushy area, there are tunnels which were dug by the warriors as defense posts. This dungeon is believed to be the armory where the two kings who had taken refuge in this place kept their guns, but it has not been attended to for some time. However, despite the neglect of this important historical site, students from various places stream in to visit the site. We are in fact sitting on gold here for the South County, only that it is our financial constraint. This opinion leader believes such developments will instill nationalism and patriotism in the youth, hence fighting the hegemony of neo-colonialism. Although they are ruling us in a, in, in, a, in a different way, we call it neo-colonialism, but still we want to reduce that one. As we reduce that one, we need to remember our good leaders who are ruling us well. <laughs> Hilara Isiga, NTV.
ni muhuliriza eiraka li abunyoro kuruga mdiaspora on TGM Radio. Hello, hello, muwebale yo hakumura na kavidio kao the work of uh, NTV. It's not our work. I just want to clarify this. This is not work for the voice of Bunyoro or Wairakali Abunyoro. E, gyo, e, video itu weolekeze, muli mogu aba NTV. Kionka, we borrowed this video to show you where they captured omukama chua kabalega no mukama wa wa buganda oba yeta gamuanga mko muhuliro mu video abanyoro twina challenge ku continuing kukora something about those sites omsaija mu muhulire wenka omsaija anambira bayi nabaza obayire nabaza mu video agambire we have the challenge we are sitting on gold we are actually sitting on the gold of omukama wa kabalega abantu bona oba kwenda kuija kumanya Na habwe kyo abanyoro na abanyoro kati na aba friends of bunyoro please let's join hands to make uh, the sites that you've just seen in the short video uh, uh, the clip uh to uh, gikoleho uh, ni na tumbu yo mukama wa kabale gawai tuna mbere ali na ho tusobole kugikora ho so that we get this money people to come and watch and see where this great man came from. Ebyo ni biebi yange nyo wenka presenta wera kali abunyoro. Please let's join together abanyoro na abanyoro kati. Hatika tugarukire omtali indwa. Omtali indwa webale ya kiki kumukuhumura kwa itu. Kandu webale kutuhereza aka video clip wako. Aka kubaza hasaiti na ambere wa kuatire omkama wa itu. Uh, ni wagenda kumutuara umu exairo. Hati tutandikirege, tubaye ntugenda ha break, ino genda kubaza ha physical appearance yomukama chua. Otio muno akiki. Ego. Mwebale muno kambavyo, ka, ka, ngeno kubaza hali kwa walega insani, enzo karuni insani ya kabalega, his physical appearance. Yes. Uh, kabalega was physically striking. Mm. He was about 5 feet and 10 inches tall. Mm with a light complexion yes which would in ugandanized english would say brown mm. and he, he had a, he had very large eyes a broad but low forehead high cheekbones a large mouth and white teeth he was immaculately clean and well clad usually in back cloth stripped with black mm. As a military man, Kabalega was energetic, often walking on his foot. Unlike other, chi other kings who were, would be carried by their subject, Kabalega would always walk on his own for long distances and very fast instead of being carried, carried on soldiers of a man. And as was the custom with kings and chiefs elsewhere. He, he, he found the sedentary life of the palace very boring. He hardly stayed in a palace. He would be moving from one part of the kingdom to another. Yes. But he found pride in going up country to supervise the training and war readiness of his soldiers, the Barrows War. Major Henry Austin, a British, he was a, a British major called Henry Austin. He was he's the author of a book entitled among swamps and giants in Equatorial Africa, which he wrote in 1902. He's one of the few people who had the chance to interact with Kawalega and Mwanga after they had been captured. They were in Kisumayu when he interacted with them during a lunch break. Yes. They had lunch together with the two, with the two kings in Kisumayu in September 1902. This is what he said. He described Kawalega as a big, as a big, heavily built man with no hair on his head, on his face, and had recently lost an arm. He was unable to speak Swahili, so one of his numerous sons interpreted, but he seemed a very quiet, reserved, old gentleman. Mark the last word, gentleman. This is coming from the observation of a white, uh, of a British major. Yes. So that's Kavalega. And uh, I've already talked about uh, Emil Pasha who stayed with him for 33 days. When he described Kavalega as a tall, muscular man with a small head and light complexion face. Mm. I quote, mm. he's lively, he laughs a lot, often checking with the mask. Mm. 
he's very talkative and he appears, appears to submit ceremonial with a certain measure of constraint. But this is this contrast what was written about Kabalega by by people like uh, uh, like Sir Samuel Baker, who hated Kabalega with a passion. Uh, he described him in very bad words. Uh, for instance, he said uh, he said that Kabalega's teeth was excess were excessively white, while his large eyes projected disagreeably that he was excessively neat. And the, uh, this really Oh, oh, uh, the likes of Sasa Murebeka is the Kabalega. But in brief, those were th that's how the Kabalega appeared uh, physically. Um, in the interest of time, I can see we are running out of time. I would go to, I'll, I'd like to talk about Kabalega language proficiency. Kabalega spoke Runyoro Rutoro very fluently. Yes. He was also fluent in Sudanese Arabic, Luganda, Lugbar, Alo. Achori and Lang just mentioned a few. In the public, he preferred Runyoro and the aid of an interpreter. Whenever he would be talking with foreigners, he would speak in Runyoro. Even if he knew other language like Sudanese Arabic, he would not use it. He would use Runyoro and ask the interpreter to interpret for the, the guest or for him what the other person is saying. And his interpreter was an Arabic man called Ibrahim. We shall, we shall meet Ibrahim at a later, at a later stage. Um, basically, that's what his language proficiency was. Uh, his diet and, and, the, and hobbies, Kavalega, uh, like other royals, they depended on an, animal products. Yes. And the, 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 his, his favorite meal was veal, V-E-A-L. -E veal is the meat of a calf. Yeah. Not so young, mm -hmm. not so old. Say about between six months maybe to one year so that that meat is tender that's the type of meat kabalega uh, enjoyed uh, together with uh, boiled bananas millet bread oburo, porridge and and and, and, and mwenge, that's banana beer and amachunde whey 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 all skimmed milk those were kabalega's favorite uh, that, that was Kavalega's favorite diet. Amazing. Um, in his free time, mm. uh, Kavalega played the mueso with his subjects, with his chiefs and the subjects, mm. the board game. That was Kavalega's mm. um, favorite game. Um, basically, that's what his diet and hobbies. Uh, uh, family life, yes. Kavalega had very many wives. It said that he married 138 wives, 138 mm. wives. Mm. One of them was the daughter of the king of Wakamba, of the Wakamba in, the, in Kenya. Yes. Uh, he, he, he went contrary to the practice at the time that kings should marry daughters of other kings or uh, 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 specific women from, uh, women from specific tribes like uh, the Banyamwenge, uh, the, 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 the Bahima, of a who were very beautiful, and uh, but Kavalega went contrary to this, and for him he decided to marry a wife from each and every clan. But at the time there were seventy-two clans in Munyoro, and from each clan Kavalega got a wife. He married commoners, uh, one of them being an Achori lady called Achanda. So you can see how Kavalega really diversified and moved away from. Uh, the common practice at the time showed that he was really revolutionary. And he is said to have sired uh, or produced Jomo Kenyatta, as we shall soon see. Uh, see. Uh, at this point, also allow me to, 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 to mention that, as I mentioned earlier, Kavalega had three official wives, the, 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 the senior wife being Mukakiyabara, uh, Wagaya, Ruigira, Akik, who was popular known in, in the Munyoro as Omugo Wabulera, and she was uh, the elder sister of uh, uh, Kasagama, the Omkama of Toro. Uh, as you might be aware, uh, in the, among royals, especially among the Babito, uh, as, uh, in fact, not only the Babito, elsewhere in the world, uh, royals, uh, in, in, incest is not a taboo among royals. There is a lot of inbreeding. In they believe that it is, it is common, or it is normal, for a king to marry uh, a princess, a Movitokati, or any other person from the royal family. To keep the blue eyes. 
to keep the blue eyes to keep in the, the blue eyes <laughs> all right yes okay. mm. yeah so children yes uh Kavalega is uh Kavalegas are produced very many children the number of children is not known but there is an estimate that he, he produced uh, one, oh, he produced one source says that he produced 150 children there are the, the other sources who say that the number must, might have been double that figure so we could say that Kavalega produced 300 children in his lifetime in fact when he was re released from exile in 1923 when he reached Nairobi uh, Nairobi Nairobi uh, town uh, by then it was a town on the on the on the 10th of june 1923 this is the start times the straight times of uk on page 10 say that kawalega was returning to his 250 children this is an article mm. which appeared in the straight times of june the 11th 1923 on page 10. so you can see that uh for them they put the figure at 250 others say that they uh, produced 300 mm. children mm. um i i'd like to point out a few of his children among the princesses the princes uh the prominent ones included prince just nyakimoso who was the eldest or the first uh the child by his first partner that's mkakiawara akiki wagaya that was uh her first child, Prince Jasnia Kimoso, she was a soldier by training and she was the commander of the elite brigade which fought up the end and he was captured together with Kavalega but he was mortally wounded. He never, he never made it to Buganda, to Mengo. He died somewhere in uh, Nyakasongora and that's why he's buried together with his grandmother, Kavalega's mother, when she passed on later. Her body was also brought and uh, buried alongside that one of, his, of her grand, uh, grand is those and, sites being renovated or worked on so that people can go and see this factual uh, because i know people are watching us on on live on facebook people may want to follow this history that you're teaching them so are these uh, tombs lie uh, well kept uh, and are they there for us to go and visit when we go back home or for any other person watching right now i, I think i think around around i think around 2013 uh, uh the chief the chief dem of, of uh, um nakasongola region nakasongola uh, uh, uh visited that site i think they commemorated that day and they they cleared that site but nothing much has been done that should not be the work of other people it should be the work of nero kingdom and all banyoro uh all of us banyoro we should ensure that these sites where Kavalega's mother and Kavalega's first son, uh, okay. Prince Jas Nyakimoso, lie, mm. uh, are, are well, uh, well catered for, well kept, and turned into a tourist site. So, uh, the, so is the kingdom, the answer is, uh, is the kingdom uh, leading a campaign to make sure that these things are being done? Because I know one of our, our favorite uh, our viewers was complaining about the tomb of or the, the king we're actually talking about today. And she was so devastated in, of, of the state in which that tomb is right now. So what is the kingdom? You as the Umtalindwa or Kurato, are you doing something to to do a campaign for us, the Banyoros, to organize ourselves and make sure these things are done? Yes, we yes we are. Uh, in the in the current uh, in, our, in our current administration, a lot has been uh, emphasis has been put on on uh, maintaining all the cultural sites where all the all the older twenty seven all the twenty six chiefs lie. In fact, as you might remember, as my uh, for your information. Uh, there was a custom whereby a, a king uh, had two burial grounds, where, where one way was buried physically, and then uh, the second the second site would be where his uh, clothes or, or gowns would be buried. This was a custom which was introduced by the first Mbito king, Mbito king, that's uh, Isingoma Mpugarukidi. So it, it, it continued for, the, I think the first 16, 17 Mbito chiefs have to burial sites, but most of these burial sites uh, are in uh, Uyaga and Uganga, is, and some incidentally are in Uganda, they're in the lost counties, uh, all the way from Masaka, uh, um, Mubende, uh, Nakasongola, and Buhu, 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 uh, 
most of the, uh, some of the graves are outside the outside kingdom, the kingdom. But in the last financial year and this financial year, a lot of uh, uh, there is a budget which has been earmarked to maintain these cultural and cultural places. And the, the Minister of Tourism, which is under the second deputy prime minister, has been tasked with maintaining that these sites, right from Mumparo, where Kawalega and Sato Wingi lie, on uh, all other sites, including uh, this uh, this site where uh, Prince Jasnya Kimoso and the uh, Kanyangenya Mtahingurwa were buried much as they in Uganda, because Nakasongola officially is part of the lost counties. Which okay. see the Uganda kingdom. Yes, we are trying our level best. Good. But I was Good. talking about yeah. uh, some of the prominent of the prominent uh, uh, sons of Kavalega. Another one was Yosek Tahimba, who succeeded him. Omkama Andrea Bisele who was arrested with Kavalega, but also later succeeded his his brother Yosek Tahimba. Uh, Omkama Sato Winnie, who is the who is the uh, uh, rip, who is the father of the current king. Zakayo Jawe Hezekiah. Rwakiswaza, Aramanzani, Mwilumubi, Johnny Kavalega, who was imprisoned by Kavalega in exile in the Sicily Island. He was one of the 11 prisoners who were sent to exile, um, uh, including the two, the two chiefs, the two kings, Mwanga and, and Kavalega, Kasohera, and among others. But allow me to talk about um, uh, a few princesses. Because I want to talk about two, two controversial princes yes, please, before we on, conclude on, this yeah, program. We about to go the for prominent princes, princesses I will talk about. Yeah, I will talk about the Batebe. Those the, those are the official princesses. Uh, who, these were Kavalega's daughters who came to assume the the, the title of Batebe. Victoria Mukabagabo, who was Kitehim, was a Batebe or official sister. She was uh, captured together with her grandmother Kanyangenya Mtaingu and taken to Uganda, but later she was brought back and uh, became the Batebe. Of the of uh Kitahimwa. Jerulia Kaikara, who was the battle of and Mukam and Record Haga, and Luisa Mukabhagus, who was the the battle of such to win. There, there are very many as I've told I've talked, I've told about, told about about 300 uh, children of Kavalega. But allow me to talk about two special but controversial uh yes. princesses. Yes, go the on. first one. Mm. Uh, in fact, in brief, just in, in case time uh, catches us, there are two, Jomo Kinyata and Reverend Prince Umfraena Kavalega. Uh, let me begin with Jomo Kinyata. Jomo Kinyata, Kavalega is said to have sired Jomo Kinyata, the founding father of Kenya. After his capture, together with Mwanga and nine other prisoners, Kavalega was taken to Nairobi uh, in June 1899. In, in the majority prison, that's the name of the prison, where they were, they were, they were taken, the prisoners were joined by Ole Nana, who was the chief of the Maasai. Meanwhile, Kavalega, whose hand had been amputated, whose right hand had been amputated, was yet to heal. He was removed from prison and taken to the Tundu Military Hospital. In that hospital, the British assigned a, a, a Kuyu nurse to treat him, and one thing to another, one thing led to another, and Kavalega befriended the Kikuyunas and impregnated her, and the, uh, she's the, she, she later gave birth to Jomo Kinyata. Can but you tell us this about his name? This has been kept. Mm. Mm. Uh, 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 when Kavalega, Kavalega was, uh, was removed from Nairobi to Kisimayu after the Barusura. Uh, rescue team had arrived to rescue him. So he left the when this lady was still pregnant. And he, he told, but he knew that she was pregnant. Good enough, Ole Nana, the Maasai chief, was not taken from Nairobi. He stayed here. And Kavalega told him, you know what? The Brits have, have, have killed most of my children. So it's as if I don't have any children apart from these prisoners, three or four children that I have here in the prison with me. This lady is pregnant. I want you to take care of that child when he's born. And indeed, when the, when the nurse gave birth, Olenana did exactly what Kavalega said. First of all, he sent a message to Kavalega to say that, you know what? Uh, the, the nurse has given birth to a baby boy. Mm. And out of excitement, I don't know if it was out of excitement, but Kavalega wrote and said this in Europe, Ogo Kinyata. Asa angire obukama buho ireho. 
literally that rich karma will eat crumbs since he was born after he had been deposed so that's the origin of the name of the name kenyatta although it, it, its spelling was was changed kenyatta as you know it but it is it is it, it is derived from a kenyoro word from kenyatta kunyata that means eating food without sauce or eating crumbs and orenana who was uh, put in who was left in charge with that boy gave him a, Kiku, a maasai name that is jomo Jomo is not a Kikuyu name, but a Maasai name. So that's how we came to be called Jomo Kinyata. Do we and have fact, that, those uh, facts? Omtalindwa, uh, uh, omtalindwa, um, 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 do we have those facts actually documented? Because we, as I said, we are on air. We don't want people to come back and say, do you have this proof? The Kenyans may come and, and bombard us here and ask him, so do we have these facts documented that actually Kinyata is a son of Omukama Chua Kabalega of Bunyoro Kitara uh, Empire. I have written about this before and I have my sources. I would say yes to a large extent, yes. But the only, the only uh, uh, full proof would be a DNA test. But what we have, I think, is incontrovertible because even in 1962, uh, Jomo Kenyatta really visited Hoima. That's on the, the day after you got the day after we got independence. That was the 10th, and uh, we got independence on the 9th of October 1962. But on the 10th, Mission of Bote told Kenyatta and his delegation to go and Hoima and tour. They told them to go and tour Western Uganda. But when they reached Hoima, Hoima they found that the, the, the people, uh, Mukama Sato Winnie and his people, had welcome, had prepared a feast for them. And in fact, the people are related and welcomed them with a lot of hospitality. And the Sato Winnie uh, requested uh, Jomo Kenyatta to sit on the throne and he told him, Welcome back home, your Kabalega son. This is your father's throne. Sit on it and you are not going back. Okay, but um, because Kenyatta was leading the, next, the struggle the next for Kenya. Turn, the next turn, because we are losing time. Oh. oh. <laughs> Sorry about that, okay. but the we next, would, you the tell next, us the story next, the next time. Son, the next son is the, the next son is Reverend Prince Umfraena Kavalega. Mm. Reverend Prince Umfraena Kavalega is one of the unknown princes of, of Mukama Chuat Kavalega. Uh, he was born when Kavalega, when Kavalega was still a prince. Uh, he was, of course, he was born in 1876, July the 18th, 1876. And he he rose to the ranks to become Africa's world, world traveler, traveler, lecturer, and preacher. He traveled around the world twice. I think he was the first Munyoro to do so. And he, he was taken to England when he was a child at the age of age 10 by a British missionary stroke trader. He, the name of that missionary was Carl Brown. So he took him to, to UK and he put him in primary school. So he, Prince Umfraina Kavarega studied he had his education right from primary up to university in England. He, had, he studied law at the University of Oxford and Cambridge before he began his tours around the world. Oh. Uh, at the age of 40, that's it, uh, 1916, Prince Kavalega was sent by the British United States of America to, uh, to recruit African-Americans to return to Africa and develop the African continent. He, he lectured in many places and lectured in many places, including Chicago, Illinois, Houston, Texas, uh, Gulfport, Mississippi, New Orleans, Los Angeles. Between the years 1916 and 1999, preaching the African redemption to blacks in the United States of America, and he settled together with his wife Lena in, in, in New Orleans in 1922. Among others, this is very important. Mm. He founded. Uh, he founded. Uh, an association who abbreviated whose abbreviation uh, whose acronym is AIMS, that is uh, Africa African in Interland Missionary Society, abbreviated as AIMS. This uh, this association was also known as the Ethiopian Interland Interdenominational Missionary Society. Its headquarters, registered headquarters, was Hoima in the Bunyoro British East African Empire. And its operation center was, its American center of operation was New Orleans, where he settled in 1922. Uh, he was the president of Ames, while his wife, Lena Kavalega, was its secretary general. Among his vision was to found a steamship that would bring 
black Americans or American Africans from America, from UK and other parts of the world to Africa to come and settle here and develop this kingdom. And that is the black star lines, how the black star line. That was his idea and it is documented in a letter which he wrote in 19, uh, 19, on April the, 20, the 23rd, 1918, to Mr. R. R. Morton, the principal of that, of Tuskegee Institute, where he said, I'm going to set up a steamership called the Black Line, the Black Star Line, which is going to take Ameri Black Americans to Africa so that they can help develop that continent. However, other Black Americans looked at, at Prince Mfrena Kavarega with suspicion. Among them was Marcus Garvey, the Jamaican-born uh, 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 Jamaican Afro-American, who had his movement called the Universal Negro Improvement Association, UNIA in abbreviation, which was launched in April 1919, a year after uh, Prince Mfraina Kavalega had uh, come up with this idea of setting up the Black Line. So he, uh, Marcus Garvey, the, uh, uh, the, uh, the campaign uh, uh, Prince Mfraina Kavalega saying that he was a British spy, he was, a, he, was, he, was, he should not be trusted, and even in fact they called the Federal Bureau of Investigation, that's the internal uh, security agency of Ameri the American go government to, uh, to, in, in, in investigate, uh, to investigate about Prince Mfraina Kavalega, and they even constructed the British government and declared his name. However, the damage had been done and because Marcus Gabby had a newspaper called the Negro World, uh, very many people decided to associate with uh, Prince okay. Mfraina Kavalega, um, and he, um, he ended up uh, dropping the idea of setting up uh, this important venture, Just which Marcus Gabby and Mutalindua, others... Mutalindua, one question. Yes. Is the aim, yes, yes. aim, is aim still uh, evident in Hoima? Because you say they had a headquarter in, in uh, he set up a headquarter in Hoima or Bunyoro. Do we have that uh, office still running or somewhere? Or is there any history somewhere? Because we are more interested in the facts uh, about this, uh, these two prince, uh, Prince uh, Kenyatta and uh, this prince, the Reverend Prince. Do we have any physical proof that he set up an address, uh, an, an organization in the Bunyoro Kitara Empire at that time? Unfortunately, we, unfortunately, we don't. Okay. Uh, maybe this question should go to all of us, Banyore, especially in the diaspora, especially those people in America. Can you help us find out where this Prince Umfraena uh, Kabarega settled in New Orleans? Where are the records about these aims association? I'm sure he passed on, he must have passed on a long time ago, and maybe even his wife Lena. Did they leave children? Did they leave grandchildren? If he was a British, if he was a British citizen, what did the British the British records say? If he attended Oxford and Cambridge University, can we trace him from Cambridge, Cambridge and the Oxford University? Can we trace him from New Orleans? Okay, because we will these do, are the, the thing that would help us. We will do that uh, as and I the, know you've, as I told you. uh, you've taxed me, want, uh, you've asked me to do research, and I am saying it on air. I'm going to organize a number of people, ourselves here, the, um, uh, from the Bunyoro Kitara Development Association, and we see that we can follow up and do some research about this prince of Kabalega, uh, uh, the one who had started AIMS organization. Hatu wa mtalindwa, onganyire tugenda, kubani tugenda. Uh, they just want to read for you some few questions. For you, I'm sure you have talked about the two princesses you wanted to talk about, Kinyata and the Reverend uh, Prince. Uh, and uh, I just want to read, to ask, tell you a few things here people are asking. Uh, Aroha Kaguza, why does why does not Rukura to build the late Mukama's tomb? I don't know, but you ex explain to us that there is money allocated or a budget to uh, to work on these uh, precious tombs of our great kings uh, where they are lying right now. So Ogwabaire, Anet Kabanyoro, Nuwabaire, Nakaguza about the tombs being renovated or worked on. Then someone is uh, a Deise Akukagamba 
omutalindwa kiki webale muno research egyo hali omukama kabalega please let's continue to fight for bunyoro history to be restated in secondary school syllabus omukama kabalega should be a subject of choice at the university levels iwe komutalindwa we know bunyoro was about to be wrapped the history of bunyoro was about to be re removed from the syllabus of of uh, of, of uh, education in Uganda what do you have to say about that and then we will be going off air soon we raised a lot of, uh, lost a lot of dust and uh, that subject was reinstated so uh, uh, the history of Miro will be taught in senior two as, uh, as has been previously done and thank you for the idea i think our leg is, is not only is not be only a subject of study up university in fact even in military academy all over the globe our leg is started because he was a, a military strategist uh, he was a, a revolutionary he was in a, an innovator among others uh Annette, I think I've already told you Mparo Royal Tombs, among other to our culture and tourist sites, are being renovated, and we have earmarked uh, a substantial amount of money for that uh, for that uh, activity. Uh, uh, I maybe I, 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 need, I need to mention that I'm writing a book yes. uh, entitled "The Life and Times of Omukama Chatu Kabalega II, 19, 1856. 1923 and i have dedicated substantial uh, uh almost a chapter to each of these two princesses uh princes prince jomo kinyata and uh, prince uh, reverend prince umfraina kawalega among among others just uh, pray for me and, uh, and lend me material and more support that i complete this order task of writing uh, the most perhaps the most comprehensive book about our hero Omkama Chatu Kavalega, but a lot needs to be done, but have made substantial headway. Thank you so much, Um And uh, just to remind uh, to ask you a kiki or to yambe or gende after the uh, this show, or about to ngide yo wire buke or going back to TGM live or really recorded uh, uh the record the recorded uh, uh version of this uh show some of these questions that our viewers will be have will have asked in the chat that I haven't been able to read out so then you can connect with them and then tell tell them more about your book and ask and tell them what you want people to help you with so that we can make together we can make this uh, book uh, book uh, with you Hati uh, omtalindwa kagambo kamu konka what do you want people to hear learn from this show before we go off air and they need to see bule bona tugende habokuba engineer white akwenda turugeha air autyomuno akiki kagambo kamu I'd, I'd like to echo uh, Napoleon Bonaparte uh, in his uh, in his message to his son after after he had been arrested in uh, had been arrested and exiled in uh, Elba uh, El Island. He said that to know where you are coming from, to know where you are going, you have to know where you are coming from. To know where you are and where you are coming from, you have to know. To know where you are you are and where you are going, you have to know where you are coming from. So it is important that we know our history, the history of Unero, as Unero, it is important that we know the history of Unero. It is important that we know our culture. The message to the, the people in the diaspora, the Banyoro in the diaspora, is please come back home. You may not come back physically, but invest in Unero. Take it in interest in Unero. Teach your children Unero, Unero language, Unero culture, and uh, keep monitoring the developments in Ibunyoro. Make sure that you lend your support the way you can. We are sure that this is a time of renaissance for Ibunyoro Kingdom. Someone said that it takes 100 years to replace a hero. It is now past 100 since Kavalega passed on. And this is the time for us to say uh, a new dawn had, uh, has, a new era has dawned on Ibunyoro. Um, with those few, few words, I'd like to conclude by saying that's the motto of New Rectora Kingdom, which was adopted by the Uganda uh, the state of Uganda in 1962. Less love, I love New I'll die for New 
Thank you so much omutali ndoa wa urukurato rwabunyo rokitara a uh, kingdom. Nobuga mbobo bukebo concluding. Gide, let's love our motherland. Let's love where we come from. And there was someone here who has wanted you to talk about Budongo Forest. But that will come next time because it's the thing on vogue right now. Everyone wants to fight for Budongo Forest. And iwe nko mutali ndoa. Bugoma, bugoma, bugoma. Bugo, bugoma. Iwe nko, nko, nko mutali. Bugoma, yes. Yeah, ujakuba no to high your views. If you can go on our channel chat facebook live tgm radio her voice of bunyoro in the diaspora and chat with your viewers and chat with your people so that they get to connect with the kingdom webale muno akiki kutuhe kitinisa kuikiriza kuija kuba her voice of bunyoro ida kalia bunyoro om diaspora hano her tgm radio sponsored by uh, bunyoro kitara development association webale muno kandi aborukurato no mukama om, omkama gafabusa solomon doctor omutura mukize itwe abana na emienda ya bunyoro hanu tumuenda muno kandi ni tukora na amani kugumia obunyoro na mbere tuli omu UK US obo inabantu wano abaire baingi abarugire Dubai US UK Italy ituene emienda ya bunyoro tukuenda our motherland webale muno akiki thank you so much our viewers for tuning in today and we are very privileged to once again have omtali ndua urukurato ruwa bunyoro kubaha muna itue hanu na abaya yobuga ambu wakubaza hati tu agenda kuruga ea mwebale muno kubana Itwe, please continue following us on Facebook Live, TGM Radio UK. Uh, nitugenda kugenda, nituja kuba to next time, same time, 7 o'clock sharp, uh, at TGM Radio, Hanu Omu UK. Mwebale muno, abanyoro na abanyoro kati, and our friends, see you, mukama abalinde, and a good week ahead of you. God bless all of you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Mwebale muno kuhuliriza eiraka liyabunyo rukuruga mdayaswara on TGM Radio. Until next time, mwikale kurungi. Mwebale muno kuhuliriza eiraka liyabunyo rukuruga mdayaswara on TGM Radio. Until next time, mwikale kurungi.